Welcome everybody to this edition of X Live. My name's David Cunningham. I'm one of the commercial directors of X Blue. I'll be your host today. I'm here in uh, Paris, and I'll be joined by a colleague from uh, from the US shortly. Um, so some of you may have seen our webinar series um, previously. But the idea here is to come sort of live and direct um, to uh, wherever you are in the world uh, to present some of our new innovations and products. Um, not being able to travel obviously is, is causing us all problems. Um, um, so hopefully we're going to be able to teach you something and uh, inform you a little bit about what we've got here today, which is the Atlans series. So we've got about a 10 minute presentation with, with a colleague I'll introduce shortly. We'll have some questions after that. So if you've got any questions, don't hesitate to, uh, to, to, to lodge them in the, uh, the webinar application you'll see on the right hand of the screen, the facility to do that. We'll, in, we'll endeavor to answer all of them. Um, and if we don't get to your question because time runs out, then please don't hesitate to, uh, to contact XBlue for answers later. Um, so XBlue, we've been making inertial navigation systems for more than 20 years, um, deployed in a whole range of different applications, really high performing systems in, in satellites for remote sensing, um, in submarines for uh, underwater navigation, underwater vehicles and so on. So over this period, we've, we've learned a great deal about the requirements of navigation and the, the technology that we put into to our products. Um, and this, this range of uh, uh, land and air dedicated products is something that we'll, we'll present today. I'll introduce you now to a colleague of mine, uh, Jean-Baptiste Lacombe, who's uh, the leader of our R&D team in our Denver facility in the US. Welcome, JB. Thank you, David. Hi. Hi, everybody. Good morning to you. So coming back to the, the matter in hand, so we're here to talk about the, the Atlan series, land and air dedicated products. Um, maybe JB, you can just tell us why we've developed this new range of, of, of products. Yeah, sure. Uh, so the idea of that new range of products comes from a, a fact, uh, you know, the demand for precise positioning has exploded in the past years for autonomous navigation, for mapping, for asset management, for survey. And the sensors that were foreseen to meet that demand, um, the LIDARs, uh, MEMS IMU, for instance, they failed to meet all the requirements. So um, the question was, uh, can we do something about it at XBlue? And because, as you say, we, we are a manufacturer, we do the FOS, we say, well, the question was really, is it possible to bring for performance to a wider range of applications? So, um, that's why we really try to do. We thought, we fought, and you know, because we do not only do the inertial navigation system, we do the IMU, we do the sensors. We've been able to design what was, um, you know, a great balance uh, between price, performance, weight, and um, and size for various applications. That's so. That's the basic idea behind the new range of products. Okay. bringing forward performance. Uh, so, so 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 we're talking here. We've got we've got we've got three products here. Um, the range actually is is a bit broader than that. Maybe you can just just give a very quick overview of the range of products, Jean Baptiste. Sure. Sure. So um, the range of products is composed of uh, four products called A3, A5, A7, A9. The higher the number, the better the performance. Um, A9 that you just touched and A7 are improved version of uh, already existing product mm -hmm. uh, named the Airings and Atlans. See, and um, A3 and A5 are new products, so it's an extension of the range of product. And they all uh, share some similar functionalities and functionalities. They have, uh, for instance, tight coupled GPS. They have uh, the capacity to be coupled to various heating sensors. They use, they can be, they can operate with the post-processing software of FixBlue, which is called Apps. Um, they all uh, are able to operate efficiently without the need for dual antenna, so they can work with only a single antenna, mm -hmm. and they share the same interfaces. Okay, so it's a range of four products. Um, 
two of them are uh, uh, evolutions of existing products and two are new products. Um, so top of the range is the Atlans A9, this one here. Perhaps you can just give us a quick overview of that one, JB. Yeah, so the A9 is a new version, the improved version of the Airings. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a highest performing system in the market and so you want to use it mainly for airborne application when uh, you know riding pitch is important and you go to high altitudes. Difference uh, between A9 and Airings is that uh, performance has been uh, improved a little and also you get new functionalities for instance uh, the alignment um, is completely constraint free. You can align your system in any condition. You don't need to be static at the beginning. You can align your flight. And you also have some uh, uh, new functionalities like lever calibration so that you don't have to measure the lever arm between the GPS and the, the sensor. One example of application is um, race sailing where uh, uh, the CLGP and the America's Cup organizer, they use uh, A9 in their helicopters to broadcast uh, to the TV, the TV, uh, the images on TV, and they use it for augmented reality, you know, to put more information in the images. Also, it's a product that you may want to use when you want to do underground survey, when you have absolutely no GNSS, uh, that's the kind of product you would want to use. Okay, so the A, the A9 then is is, a, is an evolution of um, an ex, of the existing Airins product or the, the earlier previous Airins product um, with additional performances, additional kind of ease of use in terms of alignment and so on, um, and slightly uh, increased performances. Okay, yep. thanks for that. So next in the family then is the Atlans A7, slightly smaller. What's uh, what have we got here? So A7. Uh, is also a new version and improvement of an existing product that was the Atlancy. So as A9, it benefits from uh, constraint-free alignment, level arm estimation, and better performances than the Atlancy, slightly better performances. Um, A7 is used today for HD mapping. Uh, it's also used for um, people who wanted to get rid of the post-processing need because they, they were able to have in real time with the Atlantis the same performance they used to have in post-processing with other sensors. Um, it's a product that's used in R&D labs, mainly automotive um, R&D labs to evaluate the performance of lower performance sensors like EM, IMU. Um, yeah, that's a uh, A7. Okay, so that's the, A, the Atlans A7 is, is, the, is the evolution of, of the, 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 Atlans, uh, the, the Atlans C, the current product. Um, so HD mapping being the number one uh, application there. And now, so that, now onto the A5, the Atlans A5, which is essentially something that looks exactly like that, but... Yeah, exactly. So um, A5 is, has the same basis than A7. They are all, uh, you know, as easy to use the uh, same uh, operation. The thing that we did was to optimize the cost to make the A5 more cost effective. Um, and the result is that uh, A5 is export free and it's a product that could um, be used uh, for something like asset management. You know, when you need precise positioning 100% of the time, but you don't need to get the same level of performance that you need for estimating, for instance. Okay, so it's the same, essentially the same look uh, as, as the A7, um, but with slightly lower performance in order to address other applications being okay. export free. Um, so now on to the, the baby of the family, um, the, the Atlans A3, um, very small. Perhaps you can tell us about that one, JB. So, Sure, the A3 is, uh, as you say, the smallest. It exists in two versions, standard product, and there's also an OEM version to make it yeah. even smaller. The um, idea behind that was to be yeah, as small as possible, as lightweight as possible. It's 450 grams, an mm -hmm. OEM version, and it's export-free, and it's an hybrid INS, so it has both fog and MEMS gyro to optimize you know, the ratio weight, uh, size, price performance. Okay, so obviously very, very small, available in two forms. Um, 
we're not going to dig into the performances of it here, but you you, you mentioned the, the the hybrid IMU. Perhaps we can dig a little bit into what the what the what the rationale is there. Well, the idea behind the hybrid was that we wanted to make the product as small as possible, mm -hmm. and yet we wanted to have four performances. So the question was, uh, how can we do this? And the basic idea was to keep a, a fog for the vertical gyro and to release the constraints on the roll and pitch axis and to use uh, lower cost, lower quality, and you know, lower size and so on sensors. So. Okay, so we've got a mix of different technologies in the different axes of the, of the IMU. Um, we keep a, a, a fog in the vertical axis and, and, and MEMS in the, in, the, in the other two axes. Um, so what, what's the, why do we need the, the, the Z-axis gyro or the vertical axis gyro to be, uh, wh why is that important? Yeah, well, good question. Um, as we can see on a coming figure, um, heading is very important uh, for the performance of an INS. Uh, it's easy to understand that when you lose a GPS or when your GPS is not as precise as you would like it to be, your positioning is going to drift. And if you've got the wrong heading, you're going to you know, travel in the wrong direction. So um, heading is a very key parameter for INS performance. Uh, the thing that maybe not everybody knows is that the heading performance depends mainly on the vertical gyro. To keep a precise heading, you need a very good vertical axis gyro. So that's why uh, we, kept, we, we decided to keep a very good vertical axis gyro. Okay, so we've, we've, we've got a mix of gyro technologies in each of the axes, or a, there's a fog on the vertical axis, um, which gives us uh, the better heading, which in the end, which in turn gives us uh, a, a, an interesting navigation performance. So what does that actually look like in terms of the, uh, the, the IMU, the, the actual system in the, in the A3? So, um, as you're going to see on the screen, um, you can have a, you will have a view of the A3 architecture. So um, the A3 has a frog in the middle, that's a round box at the bottom, and around it you've got a MEM sensor for the Ryan pitch axis, you've got accelerometers, on top of it you've got the electronical board, and as an option you can have a very uh, high precision GPS from Septentrio. You always have a new block included. So as you can see, we really optimized the, um, the size and the, of, of the system to around the fog to get the best of the performance. And the interest of that is um, for application. I mean, it has a lot of applications, but one application that is very striking is uh, for drone application. You know, removing the need for dual antenna and be able to provide the precise heading without any dual antenna is something important for lights or the drones. Um, if you go on a straight line, for instance, you will see the difference uh, between a system that has a very good vertical uh, fog and a system that does not. Okay, thanks, thanks, uh, JB. So, um, so essentially, uh, we're, we're, we're maintaining the performance, especially in heading, with a single antenna system in a really, really small form factor. That's 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 what we've achieved with this product. Um, so other than the range of, of, of INS systems, Jean-Baptiste, what other, what other aspects uh, or what other th things can XBLUE offer to the customers in, this, in these markets? Well, usually uh, customers that don't want an INS, they want a positioning solution. And they don't only want uh, hardware, they also want you know, service, expertise, support. So that's why we, we provide, for instance, we've been in the mobile mapping market for more than 10 years, and what we can see is that our customers want a complete system with INS plus GNSS. They want to use uh, apps, our post-processing software to improve the performance of the data when they can. Uh, they want to, to have a support, so we have a support 24 hours a day, uh, seven days a week. They want to have expertise to help them take the best of their system uh, with, uh, you know, what's a timing issue, projection issue, and so on, so mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what okay. they need. 
So, so other than the range of, of, of sensors, we've also got the post-processing software. We've got um, we're strong training and support um, capability, and uh, we can consult with any sort of integration problem from uh, pretty well anywhere in the planet, actually. Yeah. But still, the INS is at the heart of, uh, of, of, of what we offer. And, and why, why is the INS so important in the applications that we, that we look at? Well, it's about, you know, getting to 100%. Um, it's quite easy to have a position 90% of the time. Uh, but when you want data 100% of the time, you, uh, you cannot accept, you know, to lose some information. So, you know, GPS can, can be lost. Uh, if you use a LIDAR or something like that, it can be blinded. So you can also lose the information. INS is the only sensor that ensures you that you get the information you need 100% of the time. And so um, to get one uh, that information, to get the position or orientation 100% of the time depends on your requirement and your application. So based on your application and your requirement, you will want a different level of, uh, of INS. That's why, you know, we decided to offer that whole range of products so that you've got a nightland for any needs you may have. Okay, thanks, Jean-Baptiste. We're going to come to some questions in a minute. But um, I guess, really, that's the conclusion of the presentation. So, there's, you know, the, the summary is, here's our new range of Atlans products. Um, the A9, top of the range for airborne applications chiefly, A7, A5, A3, and the smaller OEM version. Um, so we've, we've, we've got a, a solution for pretty well any application in the land and airborne survey domain. Um, and uh, uh, and we'll move on to some questions, I think, at this point. Um, so here we go. We've got some for you here, Jean-Baptiste. Um, so the first question, you mentioned the constraint, the constraint-free capability of the A9 in terms of uh, alignment. Can you can you tell us more? And can the specific question is, can I align while in flight? So, yeah, I mentioned it for A9, but it applies to all systems, so all systems benefit from that capacity. Uh, yes, A9 can align in flight. In fact, you can align the system in any operational circumstances. If you go fast, if you go slow, uh, I mean, any. the idea is that you align the system in your normal uh, operational condition. Okay, hopefully that answers the question. So the answer is yes. Um... So another question um, about, yeah, so MEMS manufacturers say their IMUs are gyro-compassing. Um, why should I buy a fog that is bigger and more expensive? So um, there are two things here. First, uh, what do you mean by uh, gyro-compassing? What we call gyro-compassing is when you're able to determine precisely your heading in a static position with no movements, no GPS, no after, nothing. And today on the market, there's no MEMS which are able to do this. You always need movements or aiding sensors like dual antenna GPS or magnetometer, and that raises quite a lot of additional problems. So there's no MEMS for us that are geocompassing. Um, and MEMS are not necessarily cheaper than folk technology. If, uh, you know, folk technology benefits from years of uh, R&D for the telecommunication world. So um, our products are really based on that. They benefit from that and are completely competitive with the main solution. Mm, okay, thanks. Um, next question about post-processing. Can I post-process the data from the Atlans with a third-party software? So um, as you know, we have uh, a post-processing software that uh, allows to do the post-processing of both the Atlans and the GPS and, and provide additional functionality like uh, data visualization, export, and so on. Uh, you can use a third-party software, but we don't recommend it because you want to get the same performance. Because we design the sensors, we design the IMU, we know it perfectly, we have very um, precise model of the sensor. And the precision of the model are very important to get the best of the product. So you can, but we would highly recommend to, to use our post-processing software apps. Okay, thanks, JB. Um, you talked a lot about heading. Um, why? Well, as I say, heading is key, the key factor for the performance of the system. Uh, when you use the system to do survey, for instance, heading per se is very important. 
But even when you use your system to get your position 100% of the time, you will want to keep a precise heading when you lose a GPS. So if you use a solution using, let's say, a dual antenna system, when you lose a GPS, you, you lose your heading also. Um, so heading is a really key element to keep the precision when you lose a GPS, for an application, when you go on a straight line, or uh, when, you know, for survey or mapping, you, you need a precise heading for that. Yeah, sure. Um, so, uh, we say we offer OEM products. Does that mean we only sell to integrators? <clears throat> no, we sell to everybody. Today, we have uh, customers who are integrators who buy big quantities. We also have uh, family and businesses, so very, very few quantities of uh, units. So, no, we sell to anybody. Yeah, sure. Um, thanks for that. Um, so, now we've got one about... Um, lever arms so do, do you have a module that measure that will measure lever arms between uh, the ins and 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 the gps yeah exactly we have that in real time post processing you you can estimate all those parameters so you don't have to measure anything as the parameters that are required to to get the best of the system uh, you can estimate them just doing a normal navigation okay so those the, there's there's built-in functionality in each of the units to to yeah. estimate the uh the the, uh, the the lever arms. <clears throat> um, so why does the Atlant only use a single antenna? What's the difference between systems that use one or two antennae? Okay, so the need for the dual antenna, the dual antenna system aims <coughs> at finding the heading or keeping the heading. Uh, as I said, uh, to keep a precise heading, you need a very good gyro. So if you don't have a very good gyro, you have a very good vertical axis gyro, you need a dual antenna system to keep the heading. But because we do have a vertical axis gyro, we don't need a dual antenna system to keep a precise heading. Okay, but am I right in thinking that uh, the A3 can accept a dual antenna? So you can that? accept it in if you as want to as an option, exactly. That allows you to have static alignment for not north seeking a uh, system or to increase the speed of alignment in static conditions. So product, yeah, you, you can use it as an option. Okay. Um, what happens to the current Atlan C? Is it possible to upgrade to the, to the new Atlan A7? Yes, it's possible to upgrade. For this, you will need to send the unit to X Blue, and you will need to, you know, um, upgrade it from a hardware point of view and send it back. So it's possible for this. Please contact X Blue and uh, to discuss it. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Um, so here's one about uh, testing. Ha um, so uh, have you already tested the Atlans A5 and the A3 in real conditions? Yes, um, as you know, you know, we have customers that are more than customers. We, we've known them for years, so uh, they tried our system. Uh, they accepted to be like beta testers and helped us a lot, improve a lot uh, the the system. So yes, we've been tested on the field, and so that we are sure that what we offer will meet the requirement of our customers. Okay, thanks for that. I think that's all we've got time for in terms of questions. So um, thank you very much, Jean-Baptiste. Thank you, David, and thank you to everybody who attended that webinar. Goodbye. Bye. So there's JB. He's gone back to uh, back to work. Um, so I hope you enjoyed that uh, short webinar. We um, we will be posting a recording of this broadcast on our website. Um, so if you want to show it to colleagues or, or, or relive the experience. It'll be there shortly after, the, uh, um, shortly after we're finished here. Um, so the next webinar that we will do will be on the 28th of April uh, concerning our DRIX um, US, uh, US fee. Um, so we'll hope to see some of you there if that's of interest to you. Um, we'll sign off now, but if you want to stay on the line, then we'll be showing a, um, a short video about the sale GP um, deployment of our um, Atlans A9 on helicopters uh, to, uh, to, to do um, live broadcasting of, of the, the, the sail, sailboat racing um, around the world. So uh, if you have time, have a look at that. And otherwise, we'll see you again soon. Bye.
Sergio P is a sort of sailing redefined. Well, this is where it's all on. 49. <laughs> Phenomenal racing there. Super fast boats right next to shore. It's a masterclass. It's really exciting. It's really changing our sport. Sailing racing has a, a, a challenge when you're viewing it from the shore or on television in that it's a field of play that's on water. There's no markings. So with Lifeline, we brought that up to the broadcast. We tell all of the key storytelling elements to the race, whether it's the 100 meter lines, the mark circles, the flags on the boat, all of that is possible because of the IX Blue Arian. The Arian sits on a special surfboard um, and this is coupled directly to the camera. It's a very small, rugged, reliable unit, so it fits perfectly on the front of the helicopter. The Airings is incredibly accurate and incredibly reliable. For heading, it gives us 0 0.01 a degree of accuracy, and for pitch and yaw, it's 0 0.0005 degrees of accuracy. We need that high precision to allow us to couple the video data into the real-time space on the video screen. Ultimately, sailing is quite a technical sport. It can sometimes be quite difficult to understand. Um, you know, sometimes they're going in different directions to get to one mark. Through the, the graphics that we can put onto the images, it's a much more understandable to the viewer. It's one thing to be on board, but it's another to watch it. I sat down during last year and watched a couple of the races, and it was just some of the coolest footage I've, I've seen with sailing. Unless the audience can look at sailing and get the fundamentals quickly, we won't keep them. We use that data to really engage with the audience and tell them different stories and get them really engaged in the broadcast product.